Hello, my name is Jo and I'm the Vicar of Emmanuel Church here on South Hill. Today we're holding a gift day and while we don't like to talk about money, in the church sometimes we do have to talk about money because everything we do is funded by you. You might think that we get money from the government or from the national church, but this isn't the case. We don't get any money from the government and we actually pay towards the national church. So all that we do is actually funded by you. The money that you give helps us pay our bills, it helps us maintain our church building, it funds mission and outreach, all the things that we do from this church, the lunch club for older people, the toddler group for young families, messy church, all the things that we do here are funded by the money that you give. And your money also goes towards us paying our parish share. Now, parish share is the biggest bill that we have. And this funds us, it funds us having a vicar here on South Hill. It also funds Church of England schools. It contributes to the funding of the diocese and also the national church. Without your giving, we wouldn't be able to do any of this. Over the last year, with the pandemic, like many churches, we have struggled with our finances. We've been unable to rent out our church building, which is one of the sources of incomes that we have. And because we've not been in the building for worship as often, the cash giving has significantly reduced as well. As a church, we are struggling financially. And so recently we've asked the other churches in the parish to help us pay our bills. So St Aldham's, St Anne's, St John's and St Mary's have agreed to help us financially. And today I'm asking each of you to prayerfully review your giving. We're a relatively young church and so we don't have any historical money which some churches do have. If you don't give regularly to the church yet, but you'd like to, you can do this really easily through the parish giving scheme. And the details of how you can do this will be attached to this video and they're also on our website. You might instead like to give a one-off donation and you can do this by writing a cheque to Emmanuel Church or through a bank transfer. And again, the details of this are on our website. I know for some people, the pandemic has hit them financially hard. And I'm not asking anyone to give more than they are able, but instead to prayerfully review how you can help Emmanuel Church continue being a Christian presence on South Hill. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Something for all of us to think and pray about this week. Well, hello, it's Sunday the 31st of January and welcome to our online worship. My name is the Reverend Matt and I'm the curate here. Today the church celebrates Candlemas, a reminder of when the infant Jesus was presented in the temple in Jerusalem. A reminder that Jesus came as the light of the world to shine into the darkness and show us what it is to be a people of light. Which is why we as a community will be continuing our journey through the letter of 1 Peter and seeing how it can give us hope as a community even in these strange, challenging and difficult times. This week we'll be tackling the challenging theme of authority and how we as followers of Jesus should respond to it. But I wonder how has your week been? I pray it's been a good and a safe one. And I wonder what you've been up to. For some of us, that's been taking part in a virtual bake-off that has produced some amazing and yummy results. And if you check out our Facebook page, you will see some of those results and also how you can get involved in this week's challenge. But as we begin our worship together, 
let me just share these words from Psalm 111 and then pray for us all as we begin. Praise the Lord. I will extol the Lord with all my heart in the council of the upright and in the assembly. Great are the works of the Lord. They are pondered by all who delight in them. Glorious and majestic are his deeds and his righteousness endures forever. But let me just pray for us. Lord God, we thank you that we can gather whoever or wherever we might be right now. Thank you in the midst of all that is going on, we can be a people that worship you and remember all that you have done for us. Help any of us who are feeling lost, feeling lonely, or just plain confused by everything that is going on in our world today. I pray that you will fill us with your Holy Spirit as we seek to follow the ways of Jesus and become the people of light you would have us be. Amen. From the highest of parts to the depths of the sea, creation's revealing your majesty. From the columns of fall to the fragrance of spring, every creature you
Bible reading is from 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 13 to 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 12. Submit yourself for the Lord's sake to every authority instituted among men, whether to the king as supreme authority or to governors who are sent by him to punish those who do wrong and to commend those who do right. For it is God's will but that by doing good you should silence the ignorant talk of foolish men. Live as free men, but do not use your freedom as to cover up evil. Live as servants of God. Show proper respect for everyone. Love the brotherhood of the believers. Fear God and honour the King. Slaves, submit yourself to masters with all respect, not only to those who are good and considerate, but also to those who are harsh. For it is commendable if a man bears up under the pain of unjust suffering, because he is conscious of God. But how is it to your credit if you receive a beating for doing wrong and endure it? But if you suffer for doing good and you endure it, this is commendable before God. To this you are called, because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin and no deceit was in his mouth. When they heard their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree so that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were like sheep gone astray, but now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. Wives, in the same way, be submissive to your husbands, so that if any of them do not believe the word, they might be won over without words by the behaviour of their wives, when they see the purity and the reverence of your lives. Your beauty should not come from outward adornment, such as braided hair and the wearing of gold jewellery and fine clothes. Instead, it should be that of your inner self, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is of great worth in God's sight. For this is the way the holy women of the past, who put their hope in God, used to make themselves beautiful. They were submissive to their own husbands, like Sarah, who obeyed Abraham, Abraham and called him her master. You are her daughters if you do what is right and do not give way to fear. Husbands, in the same way, be considerate as you live with your wives. Treat them with respect as the weaker partner and heirs with you of the gracious gift of life, so that nothing will hinder your prayers. Finally, all of you, live in harmony with one another. Be sympathetic, love as brothers. Be compassionate and humble. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult but blessing, because to this you were called, so that you may inherit a blessing. For whoever would love life and see good days must keep his tongue from evil, and his lips from deceitful speech. He must turn from evil and do good. He must seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Good morning and good to be with you on this the last Sunday of January 2021. And let's hope and pray that the rest of this year may be so much better than the last nine months. How many of us, I wonder, can look back at our time at school and honestly say that they were the happiest days of our life? Perhaps for some they were. But can you remember that you had to stay in detention simply because someone in the class had done something they shouldn't have done and wouldn't own up to it 
so the whole class had to stay behind. We didn't think much then of those who broke the rules, and perhaps we don't think much of those now who break the rules and it leads to lockdown lasting longer than necessary. Now Peter, in his first letter, and these are powerful words, aren't they? Powerful words, really understands the biblical landscape and he asks his Christian readers to acknowledge and accept the authority of every human institution and his list of people begins with the emperor. St Paul had already written in very, in very similar words in his first letter to Timothy. He puts it like this. I urge that petitions, prayers, intercessions and thanksgivings be offered for everyone, for kings and all those in authority, that we may lead tranquil and quiet lives in all godliness and dignity. Both Paul and Peter make it abundantly clear that God's people are to behave themselves in society. They didn't want to give the impression that they'd, they were about to begin a revolution or an insurrection similar to the one a couple of hundred years, years before that had disastrous consequences for the Jews in and around Jerusalem. For Peter, God's people are to submit to lawful authority because of the possible consequences of not doing so. And it must be for the Lord's sake. Why? Well, I think for two reasons. First, in order not to bring discredit upon his teaching, and second, not to bring retribution upon his church or anyone else. Peter wanted to accelerate the growth of the church, and it needed space and time to get established, not to be snuffed out like a candle. If the church was going to be salt and light, it required space to be just that, not alienating the powers that be in the process. Paul had already written to the church in Rome, let everyone be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. We may find it hard, but it's God's way of doing it. We also read that Paul writes to the Christians in Rome, urging them to comply with the laws of uh, of Emperor Claudius because the Roman Jews were often in trouble and expelled from the city and he doesn't want them to suffer the same fate or worse. Then in AD 54 Nero becomes emperor and he's a lot nastier than his predecessor Claudius. So now we have these words of Peter and he's been tasked by Jesus that the church must not only survive but become a power and influence for God's love and goodness in the world. The gates of hell will not prevail against it, but don't rub Nero out the wrong way and give him greater cause to persecute you. And so he writes this letter urging submission to Nero and the provincial governors because ignorant and foolish men were beginning to misrepresent the Christian church as a kind of socialist conspiracy. Peter knew the church was being persecuted. He'd already been in prison once uh, for his faith. But here was a growing church that expected Jesus to return, to gather up all his friends and believers and take them to glory in his father's house. And I love those words from that first chapter. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded, shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. My goodness me, aren't those such amazing words for us? Peter is saying that although we may die, naturally or by persecution, we have hope. And we believe in a God who will move, move heaven and earth to be with us. He gave his only son for us and is guaranteed that nothing will separate us from him in eternity. And because of the resurrection of Jesus, we have this inheritance. We are shielded, shielded, that's a, a, a word for today, Shielded by God's power that will take us into glory. 
And Paul, before he became passionate about Jesus, was part of the mob that stoned Stephen. It was Stephen, while he was being put to death, looked into heaven and saw Jesus standing at the right hand of God to welcome him home. What greater hope can we have than this? So we hang on in there. We accept the authority of those who would do us harm. It will only be for a short while compared with eternity. And death, even if it comes through persecution, is the gateway into glory with our Saviour Jesus Christ. Persecution is the portal to paradise. For years, the persecution of Christians continued under various Roman emperors. And then along came a new emperor, Constantine. In February 313, he decreed that Christians should be allowed to follow their faith without oppression. And then when he himself became a Christian, he declared that Christianity would be the official faith of the Roman Empire. Let me just pause for a moment. And I suspect some of you will be thinking, if we're to accept lawful authority, what are we to do when that authority is abused and leads to the mistreatment or even the death of innocent people? What if lawful authority contradicts what scripture requires from us? After all, we're, we're salt and light. Surely that means speaking up and speaking out against injustice. In Acts 5 verse 29, we read this. Peter and the other apostles replied, We must obey God rather than human beings. <laughs> Looks like a bit of a curved ball into our theme for today. So is there a conflict here? No, I don't think so. God himself wouldn't want the church to abandon its duty to the poor, the downtrodden or the oppressed. He expects, uh, he expects us, or in fact he commands us, to work for those who suffer at the hands of others. Martin Luther King had it right when speaking on the parable of the Good Samaritan. I imagine the first question the priest and the Levite asked was, if I stop to help this man, what will happen to me? But by the very nature of his concern, the Good Samaritan reversed the question, if I do not stop to help this man, what will happen to him? And if people like Wilberforce and others including John Newton, who wrote the hymn Amazing Grace, hadn't spoken out against slavery some 200 years ago, would it have been abolished in the British Empire in 1833? It was just, after, just over 100 years after Peter wrote this wonderful, his wonderful letters that one of the early church fathers, by the name of Tertullian, had said, The blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. In 197, Tertullian wrote to his local Roman governor, urging that the followers of Christ were loyal subjects of the empire and thus shouldn't be persecuted. He wrote, kill us, torture us, condemn us, grind us to dust. Your injustice is the proof that we are innocent. God allows that we suffer. As Jesus had already put it, in the world you will have tribulation, but be of good courage, I have overcome the world. In Luke's Acts of the Apostles, we see that the persecution of the church pushed it out of Jerusalem and eventually caused the gospel to be spread throughout the ancient world. Samuel Lam, the pastor of the largest house church in China, who was in prison for more than 20 years, put it like this. Persecution is good for the church. More persecution? good growth. He said that his church had tended to grow more whenever he'd been in prison than when he'd been free. Suffering for our faith, he said, is part of our calling. Jesus, in one of his most disruptive statements, put it like this, Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecute the prophets who were before you. And this is the only beatitude that Jesus expands on, and it's not if, not if you will be persecuted, but when. 
It was, it was Herod's lawful authority that wanted Jesus killed when he was only a few weeks old. And from time on, resistance to the faith became a reality. As Peter writes for us here, he bore our sins on the tree that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. When they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. And John Piper put it, I think we need to rediscover this deep biblical teaching that God has called Christians to endure unjust suffering without bitterness or revenge or the desire to hurt back. We must persevere in our obedience to the gospel. The expiry date for persecution is the day when Jesus comes again. As the psalmist puts it, there may be pain in the night, but joy comes in the morning. It's the way of the kingdom. And Jesus speaks of a kingdom that's like no other kingdom in our world. For if we see injustice and say nothing, people will think we have nothing to say, but we have. The cross is about ridicule and rejection, not just for Jesus, but for those who follow him. But on Easter day, Jesus punches a hole in the wall of suffering and declares a future glory for those who follow him. Persecution now, but glory awaits. There's a fairly new song I came across the other day by City of Light, a church music group from Sydney, Australia. And it's based on Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. And it ends like this. To this I hold, my hope is only Jesus, all the glory evermore to him. When the race is complete, still my lips shall repeat, yet not I, but through Christ in me. Let me close with the collect for today. Lord Jesus Christ, light of the nations and glory of Israel, make your home among us and present us pure and holy to your heavenly Father, your God and our God. Amen. May God bless you all. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
Well, thank you for joining us this morning for our online worship from here at Emmanuel Southill. Thank you to Richard for opening 1 Peter to us and sharing with us how we can be a people that speak truth to power and authority, but are people that can also respect it too. Don't forget you can say hello via our Facebook page. We would love to connect with you. Say hello. We'd love to know where you're joining us from. But also remember that you can join in our baking challenge this week and the details of that are also on the Facebook page. And as we prepare to enter the rest of our day, let me just share a prayer of blessing for us all. Christ, whose glory fills the skies, fill you with radiance and scatter the darkness from your path. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, gladden your eyes and warm your heart. Christ, the day spring from on high, draw near to guide your feet into the way of peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. So take care, stay safe and God bless.